So in April of 2015, and a month or two prior, this front yard, all the grasses were taken out. And it was quite a job. A sod cutter was used on a lot, and just hand tools like mattocks were also used as well. And this was also rototilled. So about a month-ish later, you can see these bricks were, were taken up. But the bricks weren't used, uh, utilized immediately. Um, we found them on the road. Uh, we, we got into biking. And so some house somewhere kind of in our further parts of our neighborhood, they, I guess they were taking out their brick fireplace or doing a renovation. And look at all the resources there and what they were used for, the pathway. And then in uh, May of 2016, we had a permaculture design course. And as you can see there, we had a massive party and we didn't just learn the theory. We went outside and we learned how to build a sheep mulch garden right there on hand with some small amount of hugel culture put in. Uh, we added a lot of the organic matter for the bed portions of these keyhole beds. And then later on, we uh, added more to them and, you know, Again, the different irrigation techniques were tried. I highly recommend not using drip irrigation for these circular beds. So a little further in 2016, we started some rudimentary plantings um, over this bed. And it kind of sat uh, for a while because we had so much going on and working on other projects in the backyard. Um, but by, um, you know, a little bit longer in 2017, some of the support species started taking off here. You can see them all around the periphery. <clears throat> and here, uh, a few months later in 18, coming out of winter, these are perennial support species. You can see them just starting to really pop up and break dormancy here. Right, so that was 331 to uh, the end of March. And by the end of April, you see some of the support species already have flowers on them. And here are these garden beds that which were seeded with vegetables. They also are coming up quite well over that last month. A few days later, you can see the support species now have much more heavy bloom on them and growing much taller. And just a week, a week or two later, the growth of the vegetables is really, really coming up, or 23 days later, I should say. And um, just a few days after that, I mean, look at these support species, just reaching towards the sun and, and dramatic um, stature here. Uh, I remember I was in, in one of these garden beds on this side of the garden and I was just deep into what I was doing. I was probably, I probably had some headphones on listening to Robbie Zacharias or William Lane Craig or, or somebody like that, you know, trying to get, uh, uh, trying to, to cultivate my brain. And, and all of a sudden I heard this voice and, and I, I didn't know where it came from. I was like, I was like oh man, am I having a, a Paul moment? But <laughs> But it was actually a, an elderly lady, at least in her 70s, if not older, and she walks up and down here, and I had never seen her. And I couldn't see her because I was over here, and you can see how big the support species are. And you can also see them getting into the sidewalk, which this is you know, a good time to cut them. Um, and she had stopped me, and I was startled. I couldn't see her, so I stood up, and she goes, I just want you to know that every time I walk by here, it makes me feel so happy. And everybody always asks, you know, what did the neighbors think about this? Well, uh, there was a variety of people and understandings, but definitely in spring, I would say hardly anybody had anything anywhere remotely close to negative to say. And, you know, here we go. At the end of May, going into June, you can see the massive harvest there. And we've got the wildlife, as you can see here, uh, at just over one years old, 
uh, walking around and, and definitely trying to destroy all the landscape as possible. Uh, but, you know, you get a jungle and a little jungle critter running around. And you know, I'm sitting inside a keyhole of potatoes, uh, Kennebec potatoes, on a, on a 12 inch -ish stump. You can see a stump here as well. And um, that's um, some of the apex of that year's gardening. And here's another view of it. And just a second ago, I was sitting here and Faithful was over here. And that first image I, I showed you of the keyhole bed, that was this one with the, um, with the cabbage. As a matter of fact, if we go around, starting from here, these are peppers, uh, corn. Um, I think I used emmer wheat that year. I don't know if it was einkorn. I think it was emmer. Onions uh, here. Uh, some more onions and some cabbage. Um, and then uh, cabbage, yeah, there's it, it more onions and then cabbage came all the way through and then that bed and then this bed was potatoes, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, types of vegetables in this small little um, pathway or mandala garden here. And you can, use, you can just see all of the ecosystem coming up um, uh, here as well.